the Institute of Engineering uh, of Porto. Uh, since uh, 2012, is currently a, a PhD uh, student of the doctoral program in uh, Informatics Engineering by the Faculty of Engineering from University of Porto. He currently uh, is working in the private uh, sector as software engineering since 2009 and recently uh, he has developed a special interest in blockchain technologies. His uh, main uh, research focus is on trusted uh, open data transformations with blockchain uh, technologies. Thank you, Bruno, for sharing uh, with us your time, your work, and your knowledge on this topic. I think you can start. The stage is yours. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for attending this session. Um, I hope that you are well and safe. My name is Bruno Tavares. I'm a PhD student. Uh, my supervisor is Professor Philippe Correa, and my co-supervisor is Professor Andrea Rustiv. Uh, I will also like to thank Prof Professor Katerina Reis from Lerias Institute and the IEEE Blockchain Initiative from the Portugal Blockchain Working Group for this invitation. Uh, my research revolves around blockchain technology and open data, more specifically trusted data transformations in open data. I hope that you guys are least, uh, can hear me well. Right. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, in this presentation, I'm going to, um, to talk about open data and how data transformations can be a problem in this context. I will also propose a decentralized solution with blockchain to tackle this problem. Uh, in a nutshell, open data is an initiative to make data free, free to use. Open data is also many times subjected to uh, transformations and the goal of the research is to validate if the blockchain technology can be used to tackle uh, trust issues in transformed data. Open data and content can be freely used, modified, and shared by anyone for any purpose. This means that open data was in, is, uh, is a, a movement that was inspired, inspired in the open source movement that is gaining traction over the, the last decade. Um, as we can see in this picture, the open data ecosystem can be can be divided into three areas. Uh, the data itself, uh, or data providers, the data services, and data applications. And uh, open data can originate from anywhere. It can be the private sector, the public sector, or uh, individuals. There are um, different reasons for uh, to make data available. For example, uh, to gain trust from public opinion, to provide uh, transparency, to uh, promote uh, collaboration or simply to fulfill obligations. Um, for example, to have access to certain research grants from Europe, uh, it is necessary to make the results of the research available to, to everyone. Data services are uh, services that focus on making the data usable by others. Uh, usually by creating and aggregating data from different sources. They can also provide uh, features as uh, data management, data exploration, data transformation, and uh, data provenance. The data applications is where the value of the open data ends up uh, shining. It, it can be used for machine learning or research collaboration, for example, but the value of those applications will um, uh, always be limited by the capability that individuals or the institutions have to check the veracity of the data. What does this mean? Uh, this means that if we have open data, but we don't know from where it came, it will be hard for us to trust that information.
But the transformations usually have the problem that they can be uh, time consuming. And this means that they can be expensive. Uh, since there is mistrust, if someone really wants to make sure that they can trust data that was transformed, uh, they, they will end up doing the transformation themselves. Uh, this means that if I have the source of the data and uh, I want to make sure that uh, uh, some data set in temperature is Fahrenheit and I want to transform that to Celsius, uh, I can trust that someone else has done that or I can do the transformation myself. Uh, this will end up uh, the work being done several times in several contexts for a different purpose, uh, but it's the same one just because we, we don't have a way to trust if the transformation is correct or not, we end up uh, having to do it all over again. Uh, it is expected that, uh, that the, data, the open data continues to grow. Uh, there are more devices gathering data and there is also more need for transparency in order to create a good public image. Basically, to, to transform data, we need to, the data itself and the transformation procedure. With the, with the transformation, we can reuse the same data for different applications. Uh, for example, the one that we can use temperature data set can be in Fahrenheit, but someone can use the same data and use it in Celsius. Uh, it, it is the same data, but it's transformed. Um, the growth of the open data will also lead to the growth in data service. Or it will always, always be necessary to create the data and to make data transformations, to make the data uh, reusable. Um, well, well, there is another topic relating with, with data transformations that uh, it is uh, quite important. It is data provenance. What is data provenance? Um, basically, Data provenance is an historical record of the origins of the data. It means that we we want to know uh, where that data came from and how it got here. When dealing with transformed data, it is uh, also important to uh, um, understand which steps were uh, the data uh, uh, went through. I don't believe it will be possible to trust data if we don't know where it came from. And also, uh, we need to have quality on the data. Uh, for example, incomplete erroneous uh, or inaccurate information uh, um, is also a problem for users to trust data. And, and sometimes it, it ends up um, having data that we cannot use for anything if we don't have, uh, if the data is not. Uh, quality enough, doesn't have quality enough. For example, uh, if you use a date uh, for uh, for uh, uh, 04, 04, 2020, we don't know if we are talking about the uh, March 4th or uh, uh, the other way around. Uh, 5 4th is May 4th or the 4th of March. So we need to know also uh, what is the format of the data to be able to, to understand how we can use the data. Uh, what is the, the, the problem uh, as we are talking? In this work, we are talking um, more specifically the data transformations in the open data. And basically the question is, can we trust data that was transformed by a third party or a data service? We can have data providers, institutions that are well known and then everybody trusts. But if someone in the middle wants to provide a service based on those information, can we trust that service? Uh, we, also, we also believe that the, the data set can be trusted if we know the data provenance. Where did it come from and what information did that data suffer? So provenance is, uh, is a key element for, for us to trust the, the data that was transformed. Um, an application that leverages open data will also have hard times to succeed if there are doubts of, the, of regarding that data. So, uh, 
anything that we do to eliminate any doubts, we'll all, always be welcome uh, to providing more trust. For example, in this scenario, we have three data providers. We have pharmacies, we have a weather institution, and the transit information. Uh, then we have a data service that combines data from weather and transit. Uh, this allows us to correlate information. For example, when it is raining, which routes always have problems. Um, then someone else decided to make another service. Uh, it correlates the previous information with pharmacies locations. And you can tell me uh, where should I go if it's raining? What is the pharmacy that I should go if it's raining in this location? Uh, so then I end up deciding that I well I'm going to make a mobile application that uses a service that is provided by someone that uses another service. So this is a chain of trust that needs to be uh, tackled. Can I trust the previous service? Uh, I know that users can trust me, and uh, if I build a community for my application. Users end up trusting me, otherwise they will not use uh, the service. But how can I trust that the previous service under aren't biased towards the specific reasons, for example? Um, if there isn't transparency and provenance, I, I, I don't have any way to, to know what the, the data service is uh, doing in the middle. Okay, this is the problem uh, that we are trying to solve. This is the centralized model. This one is, is the one that we end up having nowadays. Uh, we have a data service that provides transformed data. Uh, what options do we have? We, we trust the service, no question asked. Uh, however, there, there are problems, we are exposed. If there is a problem, we will be the ones dealing with the consequence. For example, uh, if we provide a wrong service to our clients and someone find out, uh, they will probably no longer be our clients and we will lose our business. Uh, the, the other, the other uh, solution is to use the only service that are certified by a third party. Okay. This will uh, add a new layer of trust, it's true, but also leads to another question. Um, that is the motivation of the third party. Usually the third party party gets paid by the service provider. So in the end, we can have a conflict of interest, unless I myself will also have to pay a data uh, certifier, uh, a data certifier that certifies all, all the way to, and that can be expensive. So uh, it can be a conflict of interest um, and it is centralized. Someone can always uh, end up doing something that they shouldn't. As for a mo uh, decentralized model, uh, this is where uh, blockchain enters. It's, um, the, tr the transformer data provider wants to be trusted, so it will uh, upload the information to the to be verified to a decentralized blockchain. The transformation verifier runs the blockchain node and gets paid if a consensus is reached. Is it decentralized? So if the network doesn't reach a consensus. It will not get paid, and uh, it doesn't have uh, an incentivation or the incentive and motive to to uh, not validate correctly. Uh, the data consumer doesn't need to trust the transform data provider. Uh, he can look into the blockchain to validate if the data is is, is valid. He can get the data from the provider and then check if there is. Uh, um, a NASH or a fingerprint on the blockchain that verifies that the data is, is okay and was transformed and is correct. So to resume, the proposal is, uh, we propose to use the blockchain technology to provide a decentralized ledger that records the data provenance and data transformations. Uh, the providers can upload the, the data to be verified. Several nodes process the data and run transformations if they can reach consensus. Uh, if they can reach the consensus, the fingerprint of the data is added to the blockchain. Uh, 
along with the source of the data and the transmission algorithm used. And uh, in the end, consumers can can check if data was verified by the blockchain or not. This is more or less the proposal. Um, one note regarding this is uh, in this work, we will not address the quality of the original data. For example, the institution or person that provides the original data will be the ones that are responsible for the quality. Uh, however, we, we should always be able to track the data back to the origin. Okay, if you uh, institution uh, uploaded the data, we should be able to say that that data comes from that institution. To expand a little bit on the um, how this can be, become a little bit more complex. Uh, this figure exemplifies um, how complex tracking data provenance can be. It, it is quite easy to extrapolate from this image. When we had more data sources and more transformation algorithms, we can see that we'll have a mesh network. It will be hard to track. Um, we can assume that one data source can be used in several transformations algorithms, and uh, one transformation algorithm can be can use more than one data source. So, uh, with this in mind, we can also move to the next slide. Uh, I will attempt to define some verification levels. So, verif verification levels. Uh, we will start by separating two types of providers. One provider has a digital signature that he uses when providing data, and the other one does not have that digital signature. Basically, for us to consider a data set trustable, the data set should be created by trustable data sets. Plus, we should know also what algorithm was used to, to do the transformation itself. Um, if we don't have those requirements, it will always end up being an untrustable data set, or uh, it could be a verifiable one, but with all, always with limited information. For example, we can verify that the information came from a certain data set, but if that data set wasn't uh, trustable itself, we may not go anywhere from there. We can, if we uh, work through the, the tree, we, we can end up with leaves that uh, we don't know where the data came from, or the, the data is private and we don't have access. Maybe some people have access, others don't. Uh, we can uh, um, have access to the data, but we may not have access to the algorithm because it is a private one. So uh, it is still useful for uh, the ones that have access to that information. And if they want to share it with someone else, it is still useful for that, but it will not be useful for everyone. Okay, for the, the architecture, this is an overview of our solution. Uh, the goal is to have uh, light nodes and full nodes. The full nodes will need to, to have processing capability. They will have to, to be able to do the transformations and run the transformation scripts. Uh, to, to achieve this, we, we can have an uh, option work that they couple, uh, coupled with the, the full node. Uh, but it, this is still a work in progress. Actually, this is what we are working on at the moment. We are working on the architecture. Um, but the goal will be to, to have uh, uh, light nodes so that anyone can check or uh, upload uh, data. Um, and then we will have full nodes that will be responsible to uh, double check that uh, transformation. Several nodes will have to, to run the transformation itself. We will probably use uh, some sort of proof of stake um, variants to, to reach consensus in this network where everyone will have to, each node will have to stake something in order to validate if the transformation is okay, when the transformation is done, and uh, we we upload it to the blockchain. If everyone agree, we end up receiving some um, tokens for that information. 
those tokens can be used then to be used or used by someone to uh, upload data to the to the blockchain. Okay, so uh, I would also like to talk about uh, the opportunity regarding uh, open data. Uh, and create a little more more about uh, awareness for open data. Uh, basically, if you want to know more about regarding more regarding the European strategy for open data, you can always go to the European Data Portal. Uh, but they estimated that by 2020. Not sure if that estimation is the state of uh, the world at the moment. Is, is correct or not, but they estimated that by 2020, the market value will go up to 75.5.7 billion, billion euros. And uh, the market between 2016 to 2020 is an estimated uh, 325 billion euros, and it will also create 100,000 jobs. Um, I believe in, there are lots of challenges in open data that can be used um, and solved by by blockchain. There are several initiatives that end up trying to connect the two. Uh, this is one. As a summary, and as to wrap up for me, at the moment, data transformations in open data um, are based on trust in the provider. And um, we believe that blockchain technology can be used to increase trust in open data by providing distributed records of the of data provenance and help uh, validate data transformations. So um, I believe the blockchain has several um, uh, capabilities that uh, end up uh, matching with the needs that we have when dealing with trust and uh, when dealing with the open um, resources. Uh, and with those capabilities, I believe we can solve those problems. As for uh, publications, this is for reference future. We can have the slides after, and you can check this, the publications that uh, we have done so far. And to close my session, um, I'd like to thank you all again for attending. And if you find the, the project interesting, feel free to reach out. This is in the early, early ages of the project. Uh, if you have use cases or related projects that you are working on, or if you want uh, to uh, uh, have some kind of collaboration, please reach, reach me out and let me know. Thank you all. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you uh, for your presentation. Uh, we have now uh, some time for for questions, please. For those that that, that want to, to participate and, and put some questions to Bruno, please put down in the the chat. We have already um, two questions. I will start for the the first one uh, from Katarina Reis. The question is, Bruno, uh, regarding uh, the light notes and full notes, uh, the consensus will uh, only have to be achieved by the full notes? Uh, yes. Uh, the goal here is to perform. The, the full notes will have the capability. Um, they may not be the ones doing the hard work, but they will have to be tightly coupled with some kind of chain of chain worker that is capable of running transformation transformations can run for uh, several days depending on the data set so the goal is to have a pool where someone can upload and say something like i want this data to be validated this data set uh, when the workers uh, will have time they will pick up that work and they will uh, um, upload the results uh, basically in the form of a hash or a fingerprint it will be some sort of uh, proof of stake. It's not uh, actually uh, very clear at the moment uh, if it will be a pure one or uh, a variation. Probably it will be a variation. 
and uh, uh, the goal is for to have two or three nodes perform the same transformation, reaching the same uh, exact results, and uh, proposing the same uh, the same fingerprint. If they all reach the consensus, then the fingerprint is added to the blockchain, and the data set is uh, is set as a valid one. The light nodes uh, can it can be used to uh, uh, push the information in the first place, and then to verify if uh, uh, the the fingerprint is there. For example, the provider can then provide the data and say, well, this is uh, verified by this fingerprint in the blockchain. And the consumers can use that fingerprint if they want to double check and just uh, uh, a quick check to the blockchain to tell, tell me uh, if this is okay or not. Not sure if I answer. Thanks, Bruno. Uh, and the next, uh, the next question uh, comes from Philippe Correa. And the question is the architecture's uh, diagram included a few data uh, oracles. Why are they needed instead of just storing the open available da data in the blockchain? Okay, so um, basically, it's, uh, at the moment, we are not expecting to uh, store all the data in, available in the blockchain. There is a lot of debate regarding saving data in the blockchain, actually all data. Maybe in the future, if everything uh, moves towards that uh, path, we can actually have the data inside the blockchain, but at the moment we don't. And since we don't have the data in the blockchain, we will have to have a way to uh, reach out to the data and also um, uh, the other way around. So we can also publish if we want uh, data to the outside. That's why we need the articles too to make that reach between the uh, uh, data providers and the information inside the blockchain, and also to be used to perform the transformations itself by the full nodes. Thanks, Bruno. Uh, I think we have, we have here an uh, upgrade from previous uh, question. Uh, regarding the consensus, uh, uh, will it be proof of uh, of work? No, it, 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 I'm not expecting to be proof of work. It was something that we discussed. At the moment, we are moving away from proof of work. The the, the way why you discuss it is we already have do, uh, we already have work to do, right? We are doing data transformations, so maybe we could somehow use that to uh, uh, validate if the, the uh, the node has done the work or not correctly. The, the thing is that it will always depend on the data set. We can have a, a very easy data set and a very hard one. If we make it a proof of work, the motivation to use the, to um, actually do the data transformations that are, are the hard ones will not be uh, made. Uh, probably the nodes will always try to do the the ones that are easy to do because they will make more money with that. So uh, we are moving away from data, uh, from the proof of work and going towards uh, some sort of a proof of stake. Um, this way, each node will have to uh, uh, add a value there uh, to be able to work. If he's done the work correctly, he will receive some value back. If not, it will lose the money or the token. Thanks, Bruno. If you decide uh, on technology? Um, uh, more or less. It's not closed yet, but uh, we, we are between Hyperledger and uh, a new project that is uh, um, the substrate uh, blockchain from Parity. Substrate is, is also working with Ethereum. So that's the two ones that, the two frameworks that we're using or exploring at the moment to implement this. Okay. Thank you, uh, Bruno. Uh, another question 
Have you thought uh, about how will you address the trust in the oracles? Um, to be able to thinking about. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not sure if we are, we will end up needing to trust the oracles so that much because uh, in the end the oracle is just a way to get the information to the blockchain. And if the Oracle use wrong information, we will just end up validating wrong information and adding wrong information to the to the blockchain. So um, the data provider itself will not be able to use that to, to say that it's verified. If you have a corrupt uh, Oracle in the middle, uh, you, you won't. No one will use that data. Sure, it could uh, have a problem in our blockchain. It can be doing work that is worthless, but uh, um, it, it's not something that I believe it will happen. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you so much for your presentation and your time uh, with us uh, on uh, the second, the second uh, blockchain uh, initiative uh, talk. Uh, thank you so much, Bruno.